So, um, so yes, LV, we are a financial services company. Um, we, we have been around since, uh, I think it's 18, 1857, I might be slightly wrong, but we've been around for quite a long, a long time. Um, and uh, we specialize in general insurance and life insurance. And uh, um, really what I'm gonna do today is, is uh, talk about the general insurance side of the business and uh, just to sort of cast our minds back as to where we were and, and take you through some of that journey with some hopefully noticeable highlights. So I'm going back to 2006. I'm going back there because that's when we brought in a new senior leadership team um, to, to sort of turn the fortunes around of what was Liverpool Victoria then. Um, and many of you probably know, we're based just down the road in, in Bournemouth is where our head office is. Um, and uh, I came in as part of that leadership team back in 2006. Um, the reason we needed to change the fortunes was that in that year for general insurance business, we just we made a loss of 45 million pounds, um, which which is quite quite incredible, and, and that was a trend that we we'd seen for for a number of years. So the the job of the new leadership team was really to to reverse that to to keep the business keep the business going in, in effect. Um, so we had a um, a very clear call to action then. My role within that was really to, to look at the, the online side of the business, as we called it then. Digital was a bit of a new thing, I know. So it was online. Just, just sort the online stuff out, Paul. Um, and um, so my focus was very much around growth. I had a few challenges there, and, and some of you would be able to empathize with this. Uh, the, the, the few notable ones, I suppose, would be, um, I did some, I, I previously was at eshore.com. I, I started, um, well, I was, I was part of the startup of eshore.com and Sheila's Wheels and did the online side of the business of that. And we tended to be ranked, we benchmarked ourselves, and I was always saying, well, we're, we're near the top from an insurance point of view of the benchmarking. I did a similar benchmark at Liverpool Victoria uh, out of 30 financial services companies. And I think we, we were literally 26th or 27th out of, out of 30. So I knew we needed a lot to do as far as customer experience was concerned and our digital capabilities were concerned, or online capabilities. Um, the other thing from a systems point of view was, and I honestly thought this was an in-joke when, when someone first told me, they said, are you the man that's going to open up the internet at night? I said, well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And then someone else said, some following meeting said, so um, are you going to switch the internet on overnight? I said, seriously, is this an in-joke or what, what do you mean? And I said, well, because um, our call centre hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., um, obviously our systems are all connected and, and the internet goes down when the call centre goes down as if that was a natural thing. And I was like, okay, crikey, we have. And, and even way back in 2006, that really wasn't on. Um, and it was obviously a massive opportunity to miss and that explains a lot of the reasons why our customer service perhaps wasn't as great as it should be for online. So um, that was a task we, we had, to, had to undergo. Perhaps another notable thing was we were looking to invest quite heavily um, in our advertising at the time. So at the time we used either direct mail or, or affinity partnerships. We didn't do any TV advertising. We certainly didn't do any digital advertising. Um, <coughs> now for me to, to really do that um, and, and a marketing guy to do that, um, um, to, to optimise it, w one of the things I needed to profile was our, um, our internet our URL. Um, our URL at the time was liverpool-victoria.co.uk. Now you try putting that on the back of a bus, people are not going to remember it. So um, I was fortunate enough to know someone who, who was able to get hold of domains and um, had a bit of a success in uh, Louis Vuitton had, had just taken this person to court and lost. Um, and this person in the States was saying, I sell to anyone except Louis Vuitton, and fortunately I wasn't Louis Vuitton, so he <laughs> sold it to us, and we got a two-character domain, lv.com, and that helped to bolster our advertising and, and, and push that investment. So um, a, a few challenges to overcome, and, and, and really a, a case of building the foundations. Perhaps the most important part of any business, is, it, it's gotta be the people, um, and actually I was fortunate enough to have some good people um, <coughs> within the company online tended to be, and some of you will relate to this, we had several marketing teams, and each marketing team would have someone who does a bit of online. They, they do a bit of the webby stuff over there, I'm not quite sure what they do. Well, what we did, we sort of consolidated those people to create something of a center of excellence. Obviously, we had to recruit externally to get the specialist skills in, but it's not always a case of just, you know, bringing new people in. You actually have to develop the existing people, and I'm glad that we did it, because, you know, without question, some of my best people are the people that have stayed you know, and that, and that I, I inherited. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that was something that we, we looked to do back in, in 2006. If we roll forward a couple of years later, um, we, we'd gone through a massive trajectory of growth. Um, people were starting to hear, they were starting to go, 
we hear of you, we're still not sure if you're an insurance company or a train station or if you're based in Liverpool somewhere, but we are starting to hear you. So that was, that was starting to have some good effect. Um, as far as our, our online capabilities was concerned, our websites were, um, were, were looking better. Um, uh, I'll let you into a phrase that we, we coined. I don't think it was me, but it was someone in the team. They said, because I was saying, this, the sites are the, the bare, that it's difficult to navigate, etc." I said, you, what you want, Paul? You, you want a site that's clickable and lickable? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> so if that means it's accessible and they can navigate around the site and it looks good, yeah, I want clickable and lickable. So that's what we got, and we started to to build the sites that, that were accessible, that met WCT standards, um, and, and you know higher if, if we possibly could. Um, that were obviously, we were given a guided journey, we knew where the people were coming from, and we guided the journey through. Um, so we'd actually, we'd actually come quite a long way by 2008. Um, perhaps what we hadn't done so well, we'd grown a lot, but we hadn't really sort of optimized our return on investment. So digital marketing, for example, we'd, um, um, and I kind of saw it coming upon us. We, we set up a number of distribution and strategic partnerships, be it the aggregators, created our search capability, um, our, our affiliates, and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, perhaps what we hadn't really nailed was the, um, the, the, the effectiveness, the, the analytics effectiveness. So we were in cases paying people twice for the same bit of business. We, we hadn't really got that, that sorted out. So we really had to make sure that we were, we were maxing out on our return on investment. Uh, we also need to look at our ancillary sales. We weren't as effective as we could, so we're looking at the policy case sizes. Um, so sort of the two years before was very much a growth period. 2008 was sort of saying, we've got to start to optimise and, and squeeze the pips here, guys. Um, and search, you know, and Google, we, li literally another challenge I had, and I, and I promise you this, this was the case, because uh, we, we, we went through it. For car insurance, which is a very, very competitive term, car insurance, we were literally on page 64 on Google. And people wondered why no one came through to our liverpool-victoria.co.uk site um, or through search. We were on page 64. So 2008, I think we were probably on page 201. So we'd, we'd sort of come up the rankings quite, quite a way. And the same for, same for home insurance as well. Um, and, and obviously, through that period of time, we started to, to add the, the, the business was growing and the team was growing with it. We were adding new capabilities, adding new staff members, and we were, we were growing into a reasonably sized, sized team by this point. Jumping ahead, 2012. For me, I just, I just felt that the, the two big things at this point in time that, that were undeniably changing our world, and we were talking digital at this point, um, it, it was mobile. Mobile was something that we'd been, many of us that have been in digital for, as I have, 15, God knows, 16 years, um, been banging on about mobile was going to change the world for years and years, and it never did. And then in 2012, obviously smartphones helped that. 2012, it was like, actually, it's really, really happening. And we, we were seeing businesses, you know, we're seeing sort of, probably about 20% 20, 20 of our interactions were happening through a mobile device. Now, the problem was, we were, we were defining and building our capabilities on a desktop view only. Um, and and um, uh, some of you know that HTML5 would sort of come about around this time. And, and what we did is we re-engineered our sort of web presentation layer to make them responsive um, and a bit of adaptive, but mainly responsive design capability. So that it rendered neatly on your, your tablet or, or your, your iPhone or your Android or, or whatever you got. So I believe we were, we were the first or at least one of the first UK financial services companies to go fully responsive. Um, and and that, that put us in really good stead because, you know what, we, I mean, now we've got, I think it's like 46, 47% of all of my customers are coming through on a mobile device. So, so I've really yielded a lot of, a lot of um, um, benefit, both from a business and from a customer experience perspective, as a result of, of what we put in place um, a, a couple of years ago. Uh, social media, we'd been on our social media sites, we were quite, again, f pretty early adopter, 2009, we, we set up our respective Twitter channels, uh, Facebook, um, I don't know if G Plus was there, but it doesn't really matter because it's not the biggest thing in the world, is it? Um, and, and, and all of Instagrams and all of that was, was out there, so that's, you know, that, that, was, um, that, was, that was going well. What we'd noticed in 2012, though, is that the usage of these had suddenly spiked. You know, the number of interactions were, were extremely high. And what we needed to change was our, effectively our operating model, uh, because perhaps what we weren't doing sufficiently was um, taking those customer queries, there could be claims, there could be complaints, they could be just general questions. We weren't putting them in the hand of the right person to answer that question in a, in a quick enough 
um, speed. I mean, there's a bit of be careful of what you, what you, you wish for. In, in the older days, people used to send a letter, and you used to send them a letter back, so I've got your letter, and I'll come back to you in about a week or two. And that doesn't really work on social media. If you don't respond to them in four hours, people are getting a bit annoyed. So we had to change our operating model in accordance with the customer's expectations. And, and that was something that we, we undertook um, and really tried to get right in, in 2012. And, and just hooking up with our respective operational teams, be it the claims, be it the sales and service, be it our PR, um, HR, whoever. And, 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 that's, and that's worked pretty, pretty well. So a lot of growth, um, uh, uh, both from a business point of view um, and, and from a functional point of view. Um, and we've been on a, a very exciting journey. And by now, the, the brand was resonating well. People knew who we were. Um, we, we were probably benchmarked, you know, certainly in the top five um, against our peers. And uh, everything was going pretty well. Um, I like to sort of every two or three years kind of look at the team and go, are we still structured right? Do, have we got the right people, et cetera? And if I'm honest with you, I probably hadn't done that for probably five years or so. So 2013 was the point where I said, OK, I better step back and actually just see that we are still structured correctly, that we haven't got any gaps that have emerged, um, and that we've got the right skill sets, we've got the right people doing the right things. So basically, we undertook a, um, a review. Um, some, some of you, I'm sure, will know um, a company called eConsultancy. Um, and uh, I, I've, I've worked with the guys there for a number of years. So I felt it was right to get them in and just do an independent assessment of, of our capabilities and, and say, look, you know, how, how we, we, think, we think we're pretty good, but we need an independent person to tell us if we're, if we're shocking or if we are pretty good. Um, and, and I suspect that there are gaps. So um, they, they came in and, and did some sort of due diligence and looked at the capabilities. And uh, the, the upshot was, you know what, you're OK, actually. Your structure is pretty, pretty sound. Um, actually, the way that our, our customer insight capabilities, I mean, we record every session that goes through LV.com and our partner sites. Um, we, we have chat, we, we, um, we, we, we do appropriate questionnaires, we do MBT. They said, actually, you're, you're, you're pretty good, you're in pretty good shape. The thing is, you, you have got a lot of functions and, and you have actually left a lot of gaps. I mean, you've, you've, create, you've bolted on the social media bit here and you've done a bit of mobile there and you've got a UX team over there and they're, they're not really joined up, are they? They're just a little bit disparate. Um, could conversion rate optimization, CRO, is, is the latest thing. But they were kind of saying that kind of virtual circle is, again, they're kind of, they're all doing the right things, but they're not as joined up as, as they could be. So you, you've basically seen some gaps emerge. So we took that on board, and, and we've, we, we, we have, and we, we still are, to be honest, just, 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 um, just changing sort of people around, making sure they're co-located in the right place, making sure that we have the joined up processes and that we're, um, we're as fleet of foot in our change, if you like, as we, we'd want to be. Um, and operationally, we are doing the right things with the right people. Um, so it was perhaps, perhaps better than I was expecting, to be honest, but it, there was still change. And I think that's something you've got to recognize in the world that we live in. Um, there are opportunities and there are new channels that, that, that will emerge. Um, and you just need to sort of be cognizant of, of how that's going to work operationally within, within your teams. 2014, um, so sounds a bit silly. We started to focus on profit. Uh, what did we do before? Well, we, we, we sort of had, had the big growth journey. We'd, um, we'd, we'd, we'd done pretty well. I can't, I can't tell you the figures um, for last year, but um, we made that 40, about 45 million pound loss in 2006. In 2013, we made 100 and 125 million pound profit. Um, so revenue-wise, we, we were about 250 million in, in 2006, maybe 220 million, and we were over 1.6 billion revenue for GI um, in, in 2013. So the, the, you know the, the growth had, had had been massive, and, and obviously, fortunately, the profits had gone the right way. All of that said, um, because of the market that we we're in, the growth opportunity perhaps wasn't there as much. So it was a case of having to focus on um, making sure that we are profitable, making sure that we, we, we climb to, to nearer the top of our, um, our particular market. And, and it was a case of just making sure we're still doing the right things. We developed our, our digital platforms. We, we created a service oriented architecture framework, so it's a bit more modular, so you can do things you know, more quickly, which was all good. We're not at the end of that journey, but, but we're certainly a long way through it. Um, Self-serve capability, um, our focus had been very much on, on, on acquisition, to be perfectly honest. So um, we have developed things like sort of online renewals, documents, that sort of thing. But, but again, there's, there's still more to go um, in, in that particular program. Um, 
social media for us in, in our particular sector, so we're not, we're not a retailer, we're not an FMCG, um, so for us it was very much about customer service when we talk about social media and responding to the customer. There was certainly a bit of the brand and we, we do sponsorship of uh, county cricket, um, rugby, etc. So we have got quite a bit to talk about, but we never really used the social media as a sales platform. We, we just didn't find, we had tried it, didn't really work for us. Um, however, I think that's now it has matured. It's probably it is changing, and we did start to look at. We have started to look at a bit more, um, sort of the campaign activity and sales activity that social media can uh, can allow you. Um, and, uh, and and with that, we we've um, we, we covered a notable ones. Where I, I put the Jamie Oliver one up there that we did in in the summer. I was I was fortunate enough to do something directly with um, with both YouTube, um, who, who who were very good and. and YouTube have these YouTube stars, um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of, of some others, but you have these, uh, is it Zoella, the, the makeup artist? Someone help me, yeah it is isn't it? She's, she's hugely popular, 15 million followers or something. And obviously Jamie is, is Jamie and he's one of the YouTube stars as well. So we worked directly in conjunction with YouTube and, and Jamie. Um, we are doing some more exciting stuff because we've kind of done the hard work and we've got the foundations in place and we've seen the growth. Um, actually, we're, we're starting to do a bit more experimentation with digital. So augmented reality, uh, we worked with a company called Blipper. So one of our, one of our, on our flyers, you can kind of interact with the, the phone. You can, do, you can do games. You can find out a bit more about LV. You can go into competitions, etc. cetera. Um, gamification, you know, we have, we have kind of done, done games. We, we had a particularly popular one, um, Drift. If any of you remember our, our home TV advert last year where the child's driving a race um, uh, electronic car around, around the house, we created a game off the back of that and uh, had, had uh, 50,000 plus downloads, very, very popular. The, the Jamie videos actually, I think, I think we were up to about 4 million views. Of, he did, there were six separate videos, so, so combined, um, yes, it was uh, well over 3 million. He did one on poached eggs, it was a three minute video. We got like 1.5 million views. I was like, how many people, I was, I was like, do people really worry about poached eggs that much? But clearly, <laughs> clearly, People, people do, and it was. I urge you to watch it because it was a very. Um, he's an entertaining guy, isn't he? So it was. Uh, it was. It was a great, great watch. So look, we, we yes, insurance. You know, it's a little bit dry. I, I, I guess it, and uh, you know, it could be a bit more exciting. I'm not a retailer. I'm not. You know, I'm not Amazon or anything. But you know, we try to do a bit. We're making sure we're doing the right things for the customer. Um, in a professional way, but actually we see that digital does give us the opportunity to, to try different avenues, different channels, um, and, and, and these are, I was just giving you a flavour of some of the things that we, we do. We, uh, you might have seen Revu, the, the, so customer reviews. Um, we, traditionally, insurance companies, financial services always said, if we've got a which thing or a de facto thing and our product's great, and that's still important, but, but a bit like, um, I don't know if there's anyone in the food banqueting industry, you would, in the travel industry, you would know this already, but, but getting authentic customer reviews is becoming increasingly important. Um, it's something that Google will, will, will pay attention to. It's something that customers, you know, they, they believe in. So that's something that we've, we've done over the last 12 months. And if you're thinking about um, getting involved, I would say it's, it's well worth doing. So uh, conscious of, of time, um, is it a digital transformation? Well, I'll be honest with you, when I joined in the end of 2006, I didn't say I'm going to do a digital transformation. No one no one know what that meant at the time. Um, what we needed to do is we needed to make changes quickly because our business was, was having you know, problems. And, and we looked at changing the system, system architecture. We looked at changing our web presentation layer. We looked at our distribution capabilities. Um, and actually, looking back, yes, it has been transformational, no, no question. Um, and, and as long as you get the, the fundamentals and the foundations right, it then allows you to do um, perhaps some more exciting stuff and experimental um, stuff. Um, obviously, it, it, to, to state the obvious, um, you, know, you have to have that customer focus at all points. You need to make sure that they're having a great experience, that you're hearing from them, you're listening to them, and you're adapting them continually. And uh, certainly within financial services, we, we have a, a common problem of legacy systems, um, many legacy systems. So. Uh, uh, that's what that's supposed to illustrate. That's the old thing with the cobwebs over, and we kind of binned those, and we got some nice new shiny ones, which is all great from a technology point of view. But if you don't change the processes and the people around it as well, you're, you're just as good as you know as the lowest common denominator. So you've got to make sure that everyone is is working in in a more sort of contemporary and agile way as well. But uh, we're in a we're in a pretty good place um, from where we were, but there's certainly 
certainly still more, more to be done, um, which is just as well because I guess if there wasn't, I'd probably be out of a job, so I've got to keep, keep saying that. Excellent, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks, guys.